Good morning, or afternoon, depending on, I guess, when you're watching this video. Hopefully you already checked out the video with the puzzle for this week. If you haven't, make sure you go back and do that. Oh, I hope you guys had a good Easter break. I did. It was a nice time, spending time with family and getting some rest in. That was nice. Um... I'll be finishing upgrading your Chapter 6 tests this week and letting you know how you did. We'll have retakes available if you want to do that. Um, today, the 7.2 notes, if you printed them out, you've noticed that they are four pages long. Um, we're not doing all of them today. We're just doing the first two pages. So that would be this page right here that you see in front of you, plus the um, example one and example two, and that's it. So not too bad. Um, also, uh, I've got a video to show you tomorrow, which is my children um, dancing obnoxiously, um, which makes me laugh real hard, so I think um, tomorrow would be a good day for that, um, since I'm already posting the puzzle video today, and that seems to be enough videos already, Laura. So, okay, let's get right into it. So we're going to use... There's two different ways to do a hypothesis test. Um, one way is by using um, rejection regions, and another way is by using p-values, which is what we'll do tomorrow. But for today, um, we're going to be doing for sigma, if you know sigma, remember this is kind of just like we did with confidence intervals where we had one section where you know sigma and you use a 16 or z-scores and then there's another one where you don't know sigma and then you use uh, t-distributions or t-scores. So the plan here is that we're going to make a one of these charts that has all the steps just like you guys like. Um, and then at the same time, I'm going to do example one with you um, and make sure that that all makes sense. Okay, so starting with step one, the first step is to verify that sigma is known um, and that the population is normal or n is greater than or equal to 30. Remember, that's that central limit theorem. Um, this is just in the problem. All right, make sure you pause the video if I'm going too fast so that you can see the notes. So in example one, um, let's see, it says here that Remember step one, that it is the population standard deviation right there is $5,500. And it says that it's normal right there. Okay. Step two. Step two, you have to identify the null and alternative hypothesis. This is the stuff that we were doing before we went on break. So that's your H sub O and your H sub A, your Ho's and your Ha's. Um, either could be the claim. It depends on the problem. Also tell you whether we're doing a left-tailed test, a right-tailed test, or a two-tailed test. Okay, so step two. Let's see. Probably should actually read the problem, huh? Employees at a construction and mining company. This is, by the way, if you're going to be a statistician, um, this is a lot of what you'll be doing. Employees at a construction and mining company claim that the mean salary of the company's mechanical engineers is less than... So they're claiming that their salaries are less than one of their competitors, probably trying to argue that they should have a salary bump. Um, they took a random sample of 20 of the company's mechanical engineers, and that has a mean salary of 66900 And I'm sure you're thinking right now, why are we even doing this? We've already proven that if we take a sample, that the average is lower than 68000 But the problem is that there's not just 20 people at this company. 
Um, maybe you got a weird sample. Maybe you've got um, some people who just happen to have very low salaries. And so it's not just a question of is it less or is it more or is it equal to. The question is, is it low enough? Is it low enough below $68,000 that we can pretty much say, look, we're pretty positive that this is true. So H sub O, H sub A, this is what you guys got practice with last week. I told you that explanations were coming and here they are. Um, so let's see, their claim is that it's less than. So they're saying that the mean is less than $68,000 and that is the claim. The reason why I put it in H sub A is because it doesn't have an equals to it. It just says less than, which means the opposite of that is greater than or equal to $68,000, and that's the null. So the null is greater than or equal to $68,000, and the alternative is less than $68,000, which again is their claim. All right, step three. Okay. Step three is to um, identify the level of significance and determine critical values and the rejection region. Okay. So, um, in this one, you're going to use A16 at this point, and you're definitely going to draw a picture. Oh, and the level of significance. Um, that relates to kind of like uh, in um, confidence intervals, how confident you were. Um, the level of significance is alpha in the problem, and that basically tells you um, the chance of making a type 1 error. A mistake. So, like, the lower the alpha is, um, the more certain you are that something's going to happen. So, you might say, okay, uh, if my alpha is 0 0.01, that means I'm 99% positive that this is true. Okay, so looking at the question itself, it says that, let's see, alpha is 0 0.05, which means that you are 95% confident that this is true. And then draw a bell curve. All of these are going to have you draw bell curves. That's what I meant by a picture. Ooh, that's a perfect picture. Beautiful bell curve. I wouldn't change it if I could. Um, okay, so the H sub A, that's always the tail. Remember, this is the tail. That's what we did uh, last week. So less than is over here on the left. Here's the tail. This is a left-tailed test. And this is the alpha over here. This is the 0.05%. And this is the H sub O over here. Here's the null. There's the tail, which is the alternative. Um, so to figure out what the critical values are right there, you've got to open your book to page A16 for a z-score. 